Hi, and thanks for tuning in to Talk ETFs, ETF.com's weekly video series. My name is Sumi Roy, and I'm Senior Analyst here at ETF.com. Today, I'm speaking with Brian Jacobson, Chief Economist with Annex Wealth Management. Brian, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. And what's your take on interest rates longer term, Brian? Of course, investors got used to that whole 15-year period after the global financial crisis when rates were zero or very, very low. And now suddenly they're 5% or higher. Are they going to be here going forward? Has something fundamentally changed? I think the balance of risks are that we see 5% as more of a, a cap for rates as opposed to a floor on a going forward basis. A lot of the forces that drove interest rates lower uh, were like demographics, the amount of debt, somewhat slower growth in the United States. Those forces aren't going away. Obviously, the Federal Reserve's distortionary effects on the bond market Hopefully that's going away and so we can see somewhat higher yields. But a key question is, you know, do we go back to the 2000 to 2007 period where real rates were somewhat higher and we did have yields about where they are? Or do we go back to more like the 90s or the 80s when you had a lot more volatility and uncertainty with the inflation outlook that would then merit higher yields than that. Right now, I would say that the balance of risks are that we're in that more 2000 to 2007 period where we're gonna maybe find some stability with rates as opposed to seeing some further breakout higher like we would have seen almost reversing the progress that it was made in the 80s and 90s. So given everything you've told us, Brian, how should investors be approaching the bond market today? We've been seeing a lot of money flow into this particular ETF, TLT, the 20 plus year long bond ETF, but the price of that ETF has not stopped going down. On the other hand, we've also seen a lot of money go into ultra short term bond ETFs at the other end of the duration spectrum. What do you think investors should be doing? Right now, we're taking kind of a barbell approach. Uh, looks like a lot of investors are doing that, going really short term with those ultra short term ones and then TLT for that longer term exposure, really avoiding that belly of the curve. I think that a lot of investors are convinced that these high long uh, or these high short term rates aren't going to be here forever. And so you can kind of date those ETFs in the sense of park money there make hay while the sun is shining, but then begin to transition to start locking in those longer term rates. And people are doing that with TLT. Right now, it is a rather treacherous ride because we've seen the price of that uh, ETF continue to go down. But here at Annex, we have begun to add some exposure to that area, expecting that those rates aren't going to really stay at these elevated levels persistently. Uh, if you can, you can also consider doing there are these different like target dated ETFs where it's like a fixed maturity. We've actually heard from investors that there's some interest in there. So what we'd like to do, if we can, hold individual bonds. But from that ETF space, there are a lot of options for investors to go out there so they have the liquidity of the ETF, but maybe they can get that more targeted exposure to uh, fit whatever their risk appetite is. Great insights there, Brian. And before I let you go, I want to ask you another question about the stock market. We've seen sectors like utilities and consumer staples. They've been weighed down by rising rates, but tech stocks seem to be holding on to strong gains for the year. Likewise, small caps have sharply underperformed large caps. Where do you see the opportunities in today's market environment? One of my favorite themes right now is that uh, some of the zeros <clears throat> could go to a hero um, in the sense that those who have really underperformed, you could see some mean reversion. Small cap stocks, some of the consumer staples, those interest rate sensitive areas, utilities, even REITs have really gotten beaten down. And so if we just see a little bit of stability with rates, we could see a dramatic repricing. And so the way that we're looking at things is we think that, well, big tech is probably going to continue to be a cash cow that you can milk. Some of the longer term opportunities from a valuation perspective are in those more interest rate sensitive and smaller cap and uh, parts of the spectrum. Well, Brian, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much for taking the time to share your insights with us. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me.